Greetings, friends. This is Steve Dupuy for the Bible News Prophecy Program with Dr. Bob Teal. Dr. Teal, God does nothing unless he first reveals it to his prophets. What would be happening on the European stage now that may be leading to prophetic fulfillment? Well, I was reading over the September 2023 uh, State of the European Union address by the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. I'd like to read some of the things that she said. Our union today reflects the vision of those who dreamt for a better future after World War II, a future which a union of nations, democracies, people would work together to share peace and prosperity. These people believe that Europe was the answer to the call of history. She says, I speak to people today who say we must again enter the call of history. She says, when Europe is bold, it gets things done. Let's stand together. Let's deliver today. We're going to prove that modernization and decarbonization can go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. We've also made new trade agreements with Chile, New Zealand, and Kenya. We're trying to make other deals with Australia, Mexico, and Mercursor, which, by the way, with our countries in South America. Soon after, India and Indonesia. Smart trade delivers good jobs and prosperity. At the same time, it says Europe has led on managing the risks of the digital world. But there, she's concerned about disinformation, spread of harmful content, and risk of privacy. In response, Europe has become the global pioneer of citizens' rights and rights in the digital world to make it a safer place. We want fairness for big tech. This is a historical achievement we've been working on, and we should be proud of it. We also need to work on artificial intelligence. We're laying the foundation for a single governance system in Europe. We're also trying to connect others. I'm skipping parts of this. It says Europe's offer is the global gateway to hook up basically Latin America, Asia, and Africa to, to Europe. Then she mentioned that when she was in New Delhi, she worked on something called the Indian Middle East Europe Economic Corridor that will connect these things. And this will uh, provide cleaner energy. He said the global gateway making real differences. She's, she said she's seen it in Africa, Southeast Asia, and across Latin America, Southeast Asia, and across Africa. And says we set out also a vision for successful enlargement, a union complete with over 500 million people. We start to build the Euro European Defense Union with 27, but I believe we can finish it with 30 plus, and she means 30 plus countries. So that, yes, that means that through a European convention treaty change, wherever it's needed. But we shouldn't have to wait for a treaty change to move ahead for enlargement. Once again, this is Europe's moment to answer the call of history. So says Ursula von Wonderline. Long live Europe. That's the other <laughs> Okay. Well, based on that part of her, uh, her address, it's my opinion that President von der Leyen delivered one of the most motivational and inspiring national rallying cries I have heard in quite some time. Would you shed some prophetic insight on her comments and also explain what she meant by a defense union of 27? and we can finish at 30 plus. Okay. If she wants Europe to be bold and have more better trade through with again notice uh, South America, Asia and Africa. The fact is that there's uh, they've got the 27 countries in the EU uh, they've had and they want to go beyond that. Now some people by the way think that Europe from biblical perspective, we'll only have, end up with 10 or 11 exi currently existing nations, but that's that's really not the case. They want a larger European Union. And after she spoke, uh, there was a paper that came out, <clears throat> and it says that they should do different types of Europe. They want four types of membership, including what they call a Europe uh, light. And this report was uh, presented by uh, France and Germany. They called on EU uh, institutions to pass a whole bunch of reforms 
to be ready by 2030 to accept new members. The, the year 2030 is constantly popping up as a deadline for secular governments to accomplish their political goals. Might there be any prophetic significance at that, to that time frame? Well, yes, it seems consistent with uh, the idea early Christians had that uh, God has 6,000 year plan and then Jesus returned at the end of the 6,000 years, which would put that Jesus return probably 2031 to 2035. And since the beast power is supposed to reign for 42 months, you take that back from there and you're getting pretty close to 2030. Now, this particular report I mentioned, it's not an official report, but it was sanctioned by governments of, of France and Germany. And they basically say that uh, there's, there's, they're looking at 46 uh, uh, countries are calling European and they want to enlarge it. And they want different types of membership. One is a, the inner circle with countries with deep integration, who, for example, all share the Europe or in the Schengen area. The next one would have the current EU. The third one would be associate members, people like uh, Norway, uh, which is uh, in what's called the European Economic Area, which gives them access to the trading bloc. So is it possible this widening circle of influence of participants in the European Economic Area would also have some prophetic implications? Uh, yes, well, again, we know about the whole buying and selling, and the European beast power is going to uh, get control over that. Then they're talking about even a wider circle, which would include places like the UK, who they say will cooperate with them, but not be under EU law. Anyway, and they've looked at other countries they want to be in there, uh, such as uh, uh, Iceland, Serbia, Kosovo, uh, uh, Georgia, and Moldova. And the actual report that came out after von der Leyen's speech, it's called Sailing on the High Seas, Reforming and Enlarging the EU for the 21st Century. This report says the EU faces a critical uh, juncture marked by geopolitical shifts, transnational crises and internal complexities. For geopolitical reasons, the EU enlargement is high on the political agenda. And so they're trying to figure out how that they can do this because it's basically because it's complicated. But basically, they think that they, they need to do this and they want to prepare this for the new legislative term, which is from 2024 to 2049. And it says the report's recommendations, this is from the report itself, are aimed at achieving three goals, increasing the EU's capacity to act, getting EU enlargement ready, and strengthening the rule of law and EU's democratic legitimacy. The report structure into three sections, with rule law, international reforms, a process to reform, deepen, and enlarge the EU. So the EU wants to expand. Now, I've suggested that this could be a prelude to something the Bible warns about. In Revelation chapter 17, starting mm -hmm. in verse 12, we read the following prophecy. The ten horns which you see are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. What, what does that verse mean? Please explain 10 kings that have received no kingdom, and they give their power to the beast. Well, these kings don't have any kingdom, but they're going to get one. So this is talking about some type of reorganization that's going to happen in Europe. And they're going to end up giving their power to the beast, which is another reorganization. Okay. And the beast isn't shown to have much power prior to uh, Revelation 17:12. Uh, and this turnover of power again results in a dictatorship, something that would bring back to mind, for example, what Adolf Hitler did. Mm. But yeah. I will mention that Revelation 17:12 to 13 does not say that 10 existing nations are going to give their power to the beast, but 10 kings who didn't have a kingdom will get power and transfer it. This. this means a political or a structural shift is expected to happen in Europe. Is it, is it possible that these 10 kings would be unelected bureaucrats? Perhaps, but most likely they're going to be elected okay. by the European Parliament or some other voting process. Um, 
I want to read something else from the uh, Sailing and High Seas Report. It says, it's obvious that the EU needs an institutional overhaul to maintain its capacity to act. This is especially important with the perspective of future enlargements. To identify potential ways of reforms, we bring together French and German experts at one table. Well, an institutional overhaul is a reorganization. Okay. And when nations and empires lack the capacity to go boldly enough or quickly enough, they're inclined to support a dictator, which is exactly what the Bible says is going to happen. Now, the old Worldwide Church of God had some comments about the prophecies of Revelation 12 uh, and Daniel 11. So Daniel 11 is an important end time prophecy. And you find out that the king of the north is going to end up being uh, the emperor of a Roman empire. In its final application, the king of the north is a prophesied strong man who will lead a coming union, the seventh and final revival of the ancient Roman empire prophesied by Daniel in the book of Revelation. So see Revelation 17, 12 to 13. Mm -hmm. This article continues. Feeling the chilling embrace of Moscow, the German people may yet call for a Bavarian strongman the one they feared in good times to rescue you for their impending doom. Now that was published in December of 1980. Hmm. So this article referred to a Bavarian strongman as one that will lead a reorganized Europe. Would you elaborate that on that for us? Well, a Bavarian strongman would be somebody from Bavaria, which is in Southern Germany uh, and perhaps the Northern part of Austria. The strongman that that writer had in mind Back in 1980, whose name was Franz Joseph Strauss, he died. There's another Bavarian strongman I've been keeping my eye on to rise up someday. His name is Karl uh, Theodor zu Gutenberg. And as far as uh, Moscow goes, feeling the chilling embrace of Moscow to get them to unite, that sailing on the high seas uh, report specifically said because of what's going on between Russia and Ukraine, <laughs> that the Europeans need to get together and rearm and do all that stuff, which is consistent with what was written back in 1980. Yeah. Anyway, when the time comes for the final beast leader to arise, he's going to most likely be at least partially German, as all the leaders of the old Holy Roman Empire were as well. If the Bavarian strongman rules over 10 kings and the present day EU consists of 27 nations and is looking to enlarge, wouldn't they have to reduce their number of nations? rather than expand? Uh, some Protestants and some Laodicean uh, uh, Church of God groups believe that, but they're in error. Uh, again, the European Union wants to expand. They want to have at least 30 members. Uh, many in Europe are becoming frustrated with, with various uh, immigration matters as they get more civil unrest and economic uh, problems over there, they're going to support a strong leader. And it's, I do not think it's only going to be 10 nations. The Bible doesn't teach that. Some mm -hmm. have put the word nations in there, and that's simply not what the Greek supports. Okay. Now, some will say, but what about the fact that Europe is not that united? The Bible warns about that, says that in Daniel chapter 2, that uh, they're partly, toes are partly clay, partly of iron, so 10 pieces but they're fragile, they're not going to adhere to one another, but they still are going to unite. Well, if the scripture says they won't get along or adhere to one another, how will they all support one person? Probably because of various crises that all four of the horsemen of the apocalypse will be riding uh, before this all happens, and people will change really quickly on that. And as far as how do we know, you can know if you can believe the sure word of prophecy uh, that uh, Peter wrote in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19, which is what we've been discussing here. Thank you, Dr. Teal. For more interviews with Dr. Teal, in addition to written as well as audio articles, visit our website at BibleNewsProphecy.net. This is Steve Dupuy for the Bible News Prophecy Program.